Dear colleagues and friends, my name is Paolo Casentini and I would like to share with you this case where the posterior atrophic maxilla um, was, was treated following the concept of uh, prosthetic alligator regeneration. Uh, we published this concept uh, um, some years ago on Perio 2000 together with my mentor uh, Matteo Chiapasco and uh, mm, that was the resume of the technique that we are using since the last uh, 15 years. So PGR is uh, not a specific technique but uh, it's more a philosophy of work that puts at the center of the workflow the prosthetic project. So everything starts from the prosthetic project and the prosthetic project is guiding uh, the next steps uh, uh, meaning uh, that the implants are uh, prosthetically driven, uh, implant placement is prosthetically driven, but also bone augmentation techniques and soft tissue augmentation techniques are performed following the same concept. And then we um, finalize the case after soft tissue uh, conditioning. Okay, so this creates a, a circle where we always have the control of what we are uh, doing during the, the treatment. So let me introduce you our patient, Francesca, um, that is uh, uh, 59 uh, years old, she's in good general health, she's a non-smoker, and she has a request to improve her aesthetics and function with a fixed reconstruction, because um, as you can see she has lost many teeth in the, in the upper jaw, she also has uh, uh, the left after canine uh, um, that uh, is a hopeless tooth uh, with uh, the grief free mobility and uh, um, in the lower arch she has uh, uh, no significant problems and she has uh, almost uh, um, her entire uh, dentition. Uh, you can also see how these uh, the residual teeth, the residual frontal teeth of the patient has advanced wear and are really um, not in, in good condition. So uh, we create a preliminary treatment plan and sequence that starts of course from preliminary impressions and mounting her case on an articulator and it is very important since we uh, as we said we uh, always like to start with the uh, with the prosthetic project in our mind. So we ask the dental technician to wax the missing posterior teeth but also uh, to um, create a, again a normal shape of the frontal teeth um, and restore their correct anatomy and then we will immediately start uh, creating a temporary partial removable prosthesis uh, based on the new anatomy of the frontal teeth and on the same uh, anatomy uh, we will also create a diagnostic template that will allow us to achieve more information about uh, the bone anatomy and the bone volume in the posterior areas of the maxilla. So that's the how with a digital smile design technique we are uh, replanning the shape of the frontal teeth and that's how the dental technician is uh, waxing them, uh, creating a, 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 an improved vertical dimension and correcting the collapse uh, uh, of, um, of her um, of her uh, occlusion. Um, then we will print using a, a silicone guide uh, the mock-up and we will do this in the same appointment where the canine will be extracted. Okay so now we have a new shape of the frontal teeth and based on that uh, we will deliver um, the um, partially uh, removal denture that will allow this patient to have uh, uh, since the very beginning uh, um, a better improved uh, aesthetics and function and will allow us also to test somehow the new occlusal uh, um, system and the new occlusion that we want to test in this patient. So you see how since the beginning we are trying to improve uh, following a new project uh, uh, the aesthetics and the function of the patient. So now it's time after a couple of months after extraction to go back to this case and to test with a diagnostic template that is based again on the same uh, prosthetic project <coughs> and to test uh, I was saying 
what uh, which kind of anatomy which kind of uh, bone volume we have in the posterior areas of the maxilla so that's the combine that the patient is performing and un uh, unfortunately as you can see from the different sites analysis that we are doing it's not possible to place implants in any of the evaluated sites um, so now we have all the elements to uh, make the final um, treatment plan for uh, for this case that will include uh, uh, um, a preliminary bone reconstruction with a bilateral sinus floor elevation combined with uh, GBR in order to create uh, enough uh, width of the of the bone crest and then after six months uh, it will be possible to place implants again always following the initial uh, prosthetic plan and we will also perform at this time at this stage of treatment soft tissue augmentation by means of uh, uh, of a collagen uh, metrics and then uh, we will move to the temporary prosthetic uh, reconstruction phase uh, and uh, finally it will be possible to finalize the case and the final reconstruction will include uh, um, some uh, implant supported screw retained bridges in the posterior and ceramic veneers uh, at the frontal at the frontal teeth so um, as you can see here uh, we will use uh, the diagnostic template not only for diagnosis but also to guide the uh, following steps of treatment and it is a, a very important concept uh, following uh, PGR concept because uh, as you will see uh, um, this will allow us to um, to make the bone reconstruction uh, exactly following uh, what we really need in terms of bone volume in order to be able in a second stage to create a proper emergence profile of the implant supported reconstruction. It is our flap design and we will start the procedure from the posterior uh, mandible uh, where we will collect with a scraper some uh, um, autogenous bone chips. So you see how the incision is, uh, is performed in this area and uh, in this area it's possible uh, to, uh, to, to create and uh, to find uh, very shortly the, um, the, bone, uh, the bone layer and uh, that's how with the scraper we can uh, collect the bone. The bone, the autogenous bone will be useful and uh, mandatory not for the sinus floor and we will not put um, autogenous bone in the sinus floor because we don't really need it we can do this also all with a bios with a xenograft but uh, the presence of autogenous bone will be mandatory in order to create uh, um, the wheat uh, with uh, uh, gathered bone regeneration after elevating the the flap uh, we will immediately release it because at this stage, uh, preliminary stage of the surgery, we usually have a very good uh, um, vasoconstriction um, effect of the, of the anesthetics. Okay, and you see how it is possible to release the flap and achieve uh, that will be important to achieve uh, a tension free uh, suture. Okay. Uh, the guide uh, we will also help us to localize uh, the sinus floor and the best position to create our window that will be created with a, a, a diamond burr on a right uh, hand piece okay so we do our uh, our window lateral window in the in the sinus uh, uh, with uh, uh, again guided by uh, our our project and our by our prosthetic guide okay so you see here how the um, membrane and the window starts to move and we will uh, uh, follow always and keep the contact with the bone with our uh, sinus floor elevators okay that is very important in order to limit uh, the risk of uh, uh, membrane, uh, Schneiderian membrane perforation. We will also perform some uh, small uh, perforations in the lateral uh, wall in order to increase uh, revascularization of our graft. And now it's time 
to uh, measure the site and to place our, our membrane. And we usually prefer to uh, start with this, uh, so um, stabilizing and uh, uh, fixating the, the membrane with some uh, titanium pins is very uh, important. Um, because this will allow us to achieve a perfect stability of the graft. So, uh, depending on the size of the site, uh, um, it is important to use uh, some pins, okay? And the number of pins, of course, is also related to the extension of the uh, area. Once the pins uh, um, are able to stabilize the membrane, we open it and we can use uh, um, the biospan. Uh, in order to inject and to place our uh, biomaterial inside the uh, sinus floor. And I really like this instrument because uh, um, this is really helping us uh, to improve the ergonomics uh, of, uh, of the surgery. So you see that I'm using my uh, one hand in order to retract the, uh, the flap and the membrane and I have uh, with only one hand uh, it is possible to inject the biomaterial. You can see I'm using uh, large granules of uh, BIOS that are my favorite uh, grafting material for the sinus because they leave more space for uh, bone regeneration. Uh, in the external part of the, of the graft, uh, that is uh, that part that corresponds to uh, GBR, we will use a 50% mixture between uh, BIOS, uh, small granules, and uh, uh, autogenous bone. And that's how we create the, the mixture, okay, with the autogenous bone that has been collected by from the posterior mandible. And so you see the biomaterial is, uh, is mixed, and then we will use this composite graft to um, to, to graft uh, the horizontal defect, okay? So it will be packed a little bit with uh, retractors, okay? And then uh, after uh, creating a nice shape of the, of the, um, and correcting the defect, we will uh, uh, finalize and uh, put the final pins in order to stabilize uh, perfectly our membrane and our graft. And as I said before, um, a perfect, stable and not mobile graft is important because this will allow us to achieve a very nice uh, regeneration. And this is uh, the, um, the, 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 the picture that probably highlights better the concept of the PGR because you see that uh, we are creating our bone reconstruction exactly following our prosthetic project and the prosthetic guide uh, will will help us to um, to make the, the the bone reconstruction exactly following what we will would like to achieve in a in a later stage so the procedure is perform both sides and uh, um, and, and that was uh, made in uh, deep sedation okay and you can see here the, uh, the suture and the panoramic radiograph that allow us uh, uh, to check uh, the graft. So after six months, it's time to come back. So we are used for the third time the, um, the diagnostic template in order to make a new combine. And so uh, uh, this time you can see we have uh, all the bone volume that we need to place our implants. You can see here a comparison in the same sites where uh, implants will be placed before and after the reconstruction. You see how now we really have uh, uh, what we need in order to place our, our implants. So again, uh, implants are placed uh, um, using the last time the prosthetic guide, okay? Um, and uh, in the same time, we want to improve a little bit more the shape uh, of the crest. And to do this, we are using now a soft tissue augmentation techniques. And uh, um, since this patient already had uh, invasive surgery, we want to limit as possible the invasivity of this, uh, this surgery. And that's why we are using uh, fibroguard collagen membrane in order to avoid the, the uh, harvesting procedure uh, of a connective tissue graft from the, from the palate. And you can see how the, uh, we are not only placing 
the, um, the Faber-Guide uh, metrics uh, externally, but we are also making partial thickness incision in the palate in order to move a little bit the, um, the palatal mucosa uh, in the buccal uh, direction. Same surgery uh, is used on the uh, left side where uh, free implants will be placed because we here we will need to replace four missing teeth. And then after, uh, and you can see here, the final aspect of the, uh, of the uh, bilateral treated side. So um, we are using rapidly uh, also integrating implants. Uh, uh, we're using Stroman implants here with um, a selective surface. So this means that after very few weeks, we will be able to start the restorative procedure. We will take our impressions and bite registration. And finally, we will be able to provide a temporary scrutin reconstruction to this uh, uh, to this patient. Okay, so it, it you see that uh, the patient starts to look like uh, we we planned since the the beginning. She likes to uh, you, you you start to see again the posterior um, uh, areas of the maxilla that uh, has been uh, augmented uh, both in the hard and the soft uh, tissue sites. And the temporary reconstruction is very important because the patient is not using her posterior teeth since a significant amount of time. So it will be able uh, and it will allow the patient to uh, come back to a normal occlusion. And of course, this uh, uh, requires uh, some time. OK, so after some months, it will be possible um, uh, to go for the final impressions. OK. Uh, both on natural teeth for veneers and uh, on the um, soft tissues that has also been conditioned by the uh, temporary reconstruction and uh, it's time to go for the final reconstruction. So you see here in the model the zirconia uh, ceramic uh, um, based bridges that are again screw retained like uh, the temporary ones and the uh, ceramic veneers on the frontal residual uh, teeth. And, and here we also need a very good dental technician like uh, Alessandro Giacometti in order to uh, be able to manage uh, perfectly uh, the veneering of ceramic and the finalization of the, of the case. And here you can see um, finally uh, the final result you see uh, I, I would like to uh, highlight uh, how the emergence profile of the implant supported reconstruction seems natural and that is because uh, uh, of the uh, soft and hard tissue augmentation techniques that are very important in order to achieve something that is really uh, similar to the natural dentition here you see the final reconstruction in an occlusal view and the huge transformation that this patient had uh, before and after the, the, the treatment. Okay, so this means uh, that the patient uh, was really uh, able to uh, get back uh, her aesthetics, uh, her function, and I can tell you now that uh, Francesca is uh, really uh, a happy patient that uh, um, was able uh, through treatment to get uh, not only uh, better aesthetics and function, but also to increase her um, uh, self-estimate and uh, uh, was changing a little bit the way to act uh, and to interact with, uh, with other people. And you see here her beautiful uh, smile. So to resume and to finalize the presentation, I want to underline the, the importance of following a prosthetically guided uh, regeneration concept. Um, that, as I said, is uh, really uh, an innovative concept that is allowing us to uh, move uh, very safely through the uh, different steps of treatment, uh, especially of complex cases, always having a control uh, of what we are doing, because everything is really guided by the preliminary prosthetic concept and project, and uh, um, so we can reduce the amount of uh, mistakes that we are doing and we always have the control of what we are doing. Okay, thank you very much.